I finally got around to watching some of the other videos that rank high on YouTube for ADA website compliance search terms. And two of those videos were from lawyers. And one of, in one of those videos, the lawyer gave a brief overview of the legal landscape and then was selling her a bundle, a bundle of, for ADA website compliance. And it consists of, to paraphrase, an ADA and WCAG checklist, a website accessibility template, and then plugins to ensure your website is in compliance. Well, plugins don't make your website accessible and they don't ensure compliance. And then um, it's, it was interesting because the bundle really then comes down to the statement and the checklist. Um, and that bundle is being sold for $127. Um, but I have those available. I have a, my own template accessibility statement template and I have a checklist and a full guide available on accessible.org for free and you don't have to um, enter your email those are just free outright you can download them right now so I thought that I thought that was interesting I'm actually tempted to buy the bundle and just see what actually you get and review that because I I would be very interested to see what um, that what that bundle is um, but then in the video, she also said, so the good news is that this particular bundle that I put together and all the legwork I've done for you so that you don't have to sit there and waste any time to figure this stuff out because on your own, because trust me, it's complicated. And then she said, even if it, even, even it, it took me even some time and I had to collaborate with my fellow lawyers to put this together for you. Um, so, but you can, you can get this, this is free stuff. This is stuff I've made available for free accessible.org um, and you you can find everything that you need to know and I'll link to it below. So um, that bundle is available. I thought it was interesting. Um, and I think it, this, this, I'll continue on with another video, but this gets to a theme that just because someone has a license to practice law does not mean that they understand this space. She said it's complicated. Um, I wouldn't call it complicated. I would just say that it has multiple layers and that you just have to understand the different, the different aspects of it. So there's a technical aspect to it. There's a legal aspect to it and there's a practical aspect to it. And you have to, um, you have to really work with all of those different aspects and understand them. It's not that complicated when it comes down to it. And I've, what I've done, if you look through, uh, the ADA book and you watch my videos, I really distilled it down into the basics and a lot of my videos overlap. So I know I have a lot of videos, but that's not to, that doesn't lend to the, to the complexity of ADA website compliance. It's more so me um, trying to present the information in as many ways as possible, because this is all fairly simple. If you want to know the best practices for uh, to make your website quote unquote ADA compliant, the best practice is to be fully WCAG 2.1 AA conformant and have an accessibility statement posted on your website. That's it. That's all this comes down to. The rest is just filtering through, um, the different offerings that are available through sellers and then understanding the um, the best ways to approach conformance and how to get there. But and especially with regards to um, a checklist and and a statement, this is fairly this is fairly simple stuff. Um, you just have to understand it. So I can understand how someone you do need to put multiple hours into this, but um, you really don't have to put that many hours into it because I've already done all of that. And what I'm telling you now is after having, have, having sorted through everything, it's not that complex. It's just that the way it's been presented, it's difficult to sort through what is out there. So, with, so again, the theme is just because someone is licensed to practice law, does not mean they understand the space. I'm going to link to her video in the description. I'll also link to my free WCAG guide and checklist. And those two are separate, by the way. The checklist is just uh, a quick rundown so you know, okay, these are the different accessibility issues. 
um, under the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. And then the guide is a full explanation and it uh, breaks everything down in plain English. So it's my interpretation of the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. It doesn't mean it's completely accurate, but it's very, very good. Um, and then my accessibility statement is customizable. So, you know, um, really it's what the accessibility statement is. It's based on the Department of Justice's um, private enforcement actions. So in the settlement agreements uh, for those for those different um, enforcement actions, I've looked through what the DOJ um, has mandated and I've incorporated that into an accessibility statement. But you don't have to include all of those mandates that have been um, that have been in the different DOJ settlement agreements. Um, really, it just brings your awareness to all of the different things that you can include in an accessibility statement. But again, this is your accessibility statement. It's customizable. But with this template, I wanted it to be comprehensive and um, give you all of the different um, give give you all bring forward all of the different. Um, requirements that have been uh, that have come from the DOJ so you know um, all of the different considerations that are available it's it's exhaustive and probably and unnecessarily so but I wanted to be thorough and so you can you can um, fashion a really good accessibility statement from that template um, but those again those are available for free 